Oh, Mike, what's happening? What's your thoughts about Draymond Green oh, in real time in the second here quarter? Oh, man, I loved it. You know, everybody can't leave the same. And also, y'all got to y'all gotta stop separating Steph, leadership. and Dr They're a team, brother. You feel me? So Steph carried him in the third. Draymond got him riled up. And you know what? He hit-checked him. That deserves a, a flagrant one. Seriously, a little little bump when you go into the hole, that deserves all of that. It's either the the, the league has to get something like, y'all got to get the rules better with flavoring ones and twos because what C.J. McCollum did, that should have been tossed uh, out the game. That I agree with. Necessary. Yeah. And, and, and you, you did it on purpose and you did too much. What Draymond did was nothing. Again, I said this last week, when a player, like when that when that happened, why were two technical fouls assessed? Oh, that's what? the most... That, Brandon Ingram came up tap. to Draymond. Draymond said, get the hell up out of my face, bro. Yeah. I'm not here for all that. Why is he getting a technical foul? Well, it may get reputation? rescinded. Yeah, reputation. And it may get rescinded. The it double, may get rescinded. The double tech, though, is the most right. useless punishment of all time. Well, here's what Draymond Green said about getting the technical. Are What's you your thoughts on that? Do you think it should get rescinded? Do I think so? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> But, I agree. Uh, <laughs> but if it does, then are you concerned at all about picking up another and facing a suspension before the season ends? No, I've been suspended once. And so it is what it is. I got to play with the same intensity that I try to play with each and every time I step on the court and, and can't worry about that. And for me, if I'm going to change my intensity level, then why be out there? I may as well sit out the game if I'm going to go out there timid and worry about getting another tech. But like I said, I, I expect that one to get rescinded. I mean, I'm not sure. Like, should I let him kiss me? That's how close he got to my face or put my arms out to protect my space. So I do expect it to get rescinded. So that was Nat Fluential who asked that question. Nat's out here from the East Coast doing a great job covering the Golden State Warriors. So it's like, yeah, I think it should be rescinded. And Draymond was like, yeah, especially after what happened with Luka Doncic. You saw the NBA rescind his technical yeah, I foul. I have no idea what should be rescinded. I don't right. know what a technical is anymore. I don't know. No. I, I, I'm done trying to figure out what the league and the referees have determined are – flagrance and what aren't. So right. I don't know. But I, it is from the maker of I don't get out of bed in March. He did get out of bed. And I heard you reference that in the in the postgame show yesterday. To get up in a, for, for a March 28th game, Draymond, in the second half? Oh, well, they were like, you know, they were saying March Madness, but I had to throw in. It was like, well, Draymond actually said he doesn't get up for, for games. He doesn't get out of bed for games in March. Also from the maker of I get texts when I want to get right, texts. Exactly. So. I mean, Draymond, I'm telling you, man, the guy, he's the Yogi Berra of this era. Where the things that come out of his mouth make no sense, but they're hilarious. No, and that's somehow not we've fair. turned them into into like narrative building. Yeah, because Yogi, Yogi Berra says some things that's I, just he was intentionally trying to be funny. Dre, I don't even want to compare them to. I get texts when I want to get texts. That's a Yogi Berra ism. <laughs> it's pretty close. Yogi ism. Uh, yeah, like no. Yogi ism. For I'm just saying for the modern game, nobody's giving you this stuff. Yeah, I don't know about that. I, I mean, <laughs> he's one of a kind. But look, look, <laughs> what I kind. What, but here's the thing: Draymond did what he did, and uh, Draymond Green had an excellent second half. Uh, amazing. But it's overshadowing what Steph Curry did last night. What? What? Okay. It's overshadowing what Steph Curry did last night, off because you still got to get buckets. Yes. And you were still down 17 at the half. And Stephen Curry, who at the age of 35, we just took you know a radio debater yesterday. Try to come on here with his plus minus two man games and two man combinations. Like, dude, it's five on five basketball. It's not two on two. This ain't arch rivals on Sega Genesis, okay? <laughs> it's five on five NBA basketball. Stephen Curry went out there and literally had a look in his eye offensively and just went ham on the New Orleans Pelicans. All right. So let's not get it twisted. Draymond Green, yeah, he lit a fire, but the organization, the statue guy, the guy who helped. This franchise rise from the dead mm -hmm. and turn the Warriors into the most valued franchise in North America is Stephen Curry and what he did last night. So don't get it twisted. I'm with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, Steph is still that guy. Well, he's the liquid, the cup, the straw, this everything. Te this team goes as far as Steph Curry yeah, goes. I agree with 39, you. 39, 8, and 8. Eight threes last night. And you had to have every one of them. Well, and I think lost in the sauce of, of Draymond and even Steph, to me, moving forward, the thing that I'm most encouraged with is the great game second half defense specifically for Jordan Poole.
That was awesome. If he could, he had a block shot on a layup. He came over and and was a help shot blocker on another play. He he was doubling appropriately, like waiting for the right time to to send the double team. If he gives that kind of awareness defensively, where he's just right. just make a couple plays. No yeah. one's saying that you got to be you know Joe Dumars in your prime. Just. Make a couple plays here, and he did, and it just it fueled everything. And then his offense is always going to be there. Like it, it, the offense is going to come. And then the other guy, Jonathan Kaminga. If you tell me that I get that version of Kaminga and JP moving forward, they're lethal. Yeah, but look, man, I because you need other guys to step up. You need all because I need expect all the Steph Curry to step up. You need all those others. But there's been rhetoric about you know Steph Curry's come back and. You got to play differently in the teams. You just got to adjust to Steph Curry. Should he adjust to the other? Look at it. Again, Steph Curry's the lead dog. Steph Curry's the dude. What he does is help elevate others around him. And everybody followed. You know, Jordan Poole played great yesterday in that second half. He was awesome. Clay Thompson stepped his game up. Kevon Looney did what he does, which is grab rebound yeah. after rebound. Yeah, he was and awesome. he plays any type of role. Coming off the bench, starting, does not matter. Does not matter. Jonathan Kaminga grew up in that second half. I thought DiVincenzo had a great third quarter. He stepped up. Jerk gave Bate the second had his moments. Yeah, he did. But it's all revolving around Steph and Curry. It all does, man. And we cannot get lost in the sauce there. It's this 35 year old mm. who was just out of Davidson, small school, who continues to just do amazing things. I mean, Steph Curry, dude, he's the guy. We go as Steph Curry goes. That's just what it is. Yeah. And that's the truth here. Here's what Steph Curry had to say about his role in the trash talking between Draymond and the Pelicans. Uh, you know, I'm not a big talker in the sense of getting in there, but you show your presence and get engaged on just the flow of the game at that point and understanding what the task at hand was on the back end of all the, all the uh, trash talking and the, the fire. So I like to be in there and just feel that energy. And then here's what Steph had to say about the confidence about them coming back and winning in any situation. It's part of our DNA and who we are. And if you're looking at this game, we obviously know we have to play better. We keep saying that, and we know we can, but the fact that we can come back from whatever it was, 20-point lead, and win by 11, just play with that fire, it's all, it's, it's it's there. And until it's proven otherwise, you know, we rely on that. And hopefully we'll have, it'll give us a chance to do something special this year. Yeah, and, and they may have a chance to do something special. We'll see. It's Steve Kerr before the game, he discussed that Andrew Wiggins is now working out on his own. And there's a hope that at some point he could come back. Is that your uh, interpretation of what he said, or is, did he that come that part that come out of pre -game show, his okay. pregame okay. presser? He basically said, well, he didn't say he's going to come back. No, no, no. But he's saying the hope is that he the comes hope. back, okay. but yeah, yeah. that he is – there has been dialogue in terms of him working out on his own. Okay. We still have to get in basketball shape if he does come back. I'm hoping he comes back. Because if you get Andrew Wiggins back. Oh, man. Now to set in your bench looks like Jordan Poole, Kaminga, Dante DiVincenzo, Gary Payton a second. You could dust off to Michael Green when you need him. You could dust off Anthony Lamb when you need him. Mm. You could dust off Moses Moody when you need him. Now to set you're deep again. And all of a sudden, everything is connected. And all of a sudden, they got Andrew Wiggins picking up full court against John Morant or Brandon Ingram or Kevin Durant. Mm. So we hope and pray that Andrew Wiggins is doing okay. But I miss him on that basketball court. Dub Nation misses Andrew Absolutely. Wiggins. Absolutely, they miss him. I miss that smile yeah. ear to ear. You got to realize how happy he was to be here last season, playing in the postseason, and being a factor. His game five was legendary. And... You can make the argument that Dub Nation loves Wiggins a lot more than Kevin Durant. A lot more than they ever love Kevin Durant, which that's, is asinine. It's not fair mm. to KD, but that's the truth. Yeah, I'm, He smiled so much last year. I miss his smile. So I hope Andrew Wiggins is doing okay, and I hope he does come back. Because if he does come back, now we're back in the business of talking championships. Well, And he's another guy who can guard a guy like Brandon Ingram, Kevin Durant, for stretches of time, right? You know, like we were mm -hmm. talking about all the different bodies you could throw on him. Wiggins, Kaminga, DiVincenzo, GP2, maybe you're throwing Anthony Lamb. Like The other thing is when you watch a game like yesterday, Anthony Lamb, although he can do some nice things, it did feel like some of the moments were a little too big for him, and, and that's okay. Somewhat. You, I'm not looking for him to carry this team. No, no, no. If you're counting on Anthony Lamb to carry the team, he's not going to go nowhere. You're not going to do anything. Agreed. You know, you're not going to go very far. 
But Etienne didn't let him play hard. I got I have no problem with no, him. He, he was scrapping. I thought he got a bad whistle on the and one on yeah. Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram initiated contact and he didn't even touch him. Right. No doubt. 888-957-9570. Do you believe that Draymond Green flipped that game with that second quarter scrub there? 344 left in the second quarter. When you get the double tax, you get the flagrant. You get him stepping over Herb Jones. Herb Jones going crazy. Pelicans bitch getting off. They were going crazy. And then they go on an 8-0 run. But Drew McCree says CJ McCullough started talking, which is, you would think after all these years, getting swept by the Warriors in the conference finals in 2019, <laughs> losing in five games in 2016, losing again in 28. Like, they've lost over and up. Portland, like, <laughs> they've been sunned so much by the Golden State Warriors, specifically CJ McCullough. Who, by the way, threw up brick after brick after brick after brick in the second half. I saw him pull up on the baseline from the tunnel, and he short-rimmed it. I was like, damn, CJ. Come he, on, man. He never gets criticism for being a very poor defender. No doubt. Like, never. 6-17 to 17 yesterday. 17 shots to score 15 points. And he did not get to the free throw line. What do you think was said at halftime uh, in that locker room? Because Steve Kerr in the postgame, I hope we have the sound. He had said something to the effect of, he loves when Draymond yells at him or something to that effect. And I'm thinking to myself, all right, like what did the team itself come together? Was it the coaches? Was it everybody? Was it Draymond? Like I would love to be a fly on the wall. Here it is right here. Okay. I'm liking it because I've seen this movie before. We we need his fire. We need his fire. We're uh, you know this. You've been watching us for a long time. We do some crazy stuff out there. We get sideways. We get too casual with the ball. And without Draymond's fire, his his energy, his competitiveness, this this thing doesn't tie together. But he ties the the skill together. We have so much skill with our uh you know with our our perimeter player Steph and and Clay what they do JP. But it has to be ignited through competitive and energy and ultimately execution because those things often go together and you saw the execution in the second half was totally different so there you have it there you have it also uh here's what kerr also added about changing from the first half to the second half. it's just insane it, it is it's, it's really steve kerr says something he says something the other day said you know this is fun you know i'm having a lot of fun down the stretch here well steve we're all having heart attacks. Yeah, you look like we're you're in the a chop uh, a clipboard. <laughs> yes, Yesterday, all... his face was blood red, and all they kept saying on the TNT broadcast, look how red Steve Kerr is. It's like, yeah, the team, <laughs> he's furious at the effort level and the execution. That's like, do you fun. blame him? That's fun. We all need medication after the game. <laughs> I'm driving home thinking, I'm tired. What does Mullen think of this? Because he's seen everything on an NBA floor. This team, I, I could write the script of yesterday's game, and I would tell you that I wouldn't believe it. Just, I just remember Bully midway through the second quarter. He goes, I'll be in that back room watching the second half. You know where I'll be. I got to watch this game. I got to watch this. And then I couldn't find him. So then I just went to the tunnel for the second half. And I'm sitting there, <laughs> sitting there moving like I was George Seifert. Oh, I felt see, like George Seifert. You know, remember yeah, oh, George yeah. Seifert oh, always had his little quirks. Well, he had the face. Yeah. When Steph Curry was pulling up, I would lean back yeah. a little bit to see if it goes in. When Kaminga had that alley I was like, oh, there you go, Joe Shasky. There's your alley oop. You've been waiting on alley oops. Have there I you not, go. Have I not been? Uh, I mean, come on. But we doesn't all love it good electrify the offense when they do it? I mean, it, 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 at that point, it was a, the Avalanche had hit the Pelicans. They were done. Kaminga, they were when, done. When Kaminga dunks. It, I, I don't know. I just, I feel some kind of way. Like, I feel like I get the Holy Spirit in me. I jump up off the couch and I'm like, let's go. Like he, he just, he, the power, the size, the speed, the the, the ferocity that uh, uh, the ferociousness and, that he throws him down with. I just love it. And then here's what Steve Kerr said about the old guys. Oh. These guys, they, you know, they, they still got it. You know, like they, they're champions for a reason. It's uh, it's harder now than it than it was before because of the the decade long run and the energy that it takes. But at their core, you know, these guys are are champions, and and it's going to come out. When when Draymond was doing all that stuff in the second quarter, I'm like, dude, you can't do this. You're a leader. Like that was my big thing. Like I can't yeah. get you thrown out of this game. Like I get it. You want to fire everyone I up. The I'm same with that. Thing. I'm with that. The amount of people that were coming at me on social media saying that, like, no, no, this is what's going to spark the team. And it ended up did sparking the team. In real time, there were a lot of people that uh, that agree with me, like, hey, just don't get yourself thrown out here. I just, it felt like to me he was teetering on the edge. And it felt like the team was teetering on the edge. Um, and, and credit to them for being able to galvanize it and use it in a, in a positive fashion and channel that energy. 
But boy, I felt like it could have gone in the other direction, and, and I'm wrong. But I, I, in real time, I was petrified he was going to get thrown out of that game. We were going to look at this one as one of those yeah. woulda, coulda, shoulda moments. Yeah, I thought, I thought he lost his composure, and I thought, is this how it's going to end? Really? You were that? I, I was close to saying that at halftime. I was just like, 14 turnovers. You lose a Minnesota game in the way that you lost that game. You down big. The Pelicans came out in the first quarter, just punched them in the mouth. They end the first quarter on a 16-2 run. They were controlling the pace. They were getting any shot that they wanted. They were getting out on a break. They were stifling the Warriors' offense. It just was nasty. There was no energy in the building. I just thought, man, down 17 to a tough Pelicans team. Let's, let's remember, they won five in a row going into that game last night. Yeah. They were rolling. I mean, they just steamrolled the Clippers back on March 25th and beat them by 21 down at Crypto.com Arena. So, it's not that I doubted the Warriors coming back. I was like, it's ugly right now. <laughs> it was terrible. And, hey. and by the way, oh, by the way, one thing we didn't mention yesterday, the Pelicans had the best defense when it comes to opponents' three-point percentage. Did, I didn't know that. They play really well when it comes to limiting three-point shots. So anybody saying, hey, it was never in doubt, it was never in doubt, I think you're lying. With the way the season is gone, the roller coaster, the up-and-down nature, and in real time, watching Draymond Green do, doing what he's done, it was just like, damn, this is how it's – not saying that the dynasty was going to crumble, but it was you're down 17 to the Pelicans. That's some, in a must-win game. In a must-win game. Mean, if okay, I know Dan Dibley has issues with, like, what's up most? If that's not a must-win game, I don't know what is. Got to have it. Right? Got to have a game. I mean, g- considering the standings, so, considering the tiebreaker implications, everything that, like, the... That goes into that. They had so, to have, and for them to come out and they played so bad. There wasn't one element of their game in the first half well. that was good. Yeah, no. And look, I get it. This team has come back many, many times. They have over and over and over again. But it was dead. Now. And so for people to say, "Oh, Bonte, you were nervous." I wasn't the only one. Festus Zeli at halftime I was like, "Oh, man." He was down. We're all down. The building was as dead as it could get. I've never heard Chase Sitter that quiet at halftime during the basketball game. Really? Not, I swear to God. Wow. See, look how many, go look at the beginning of their third quarter. Look how many people took their time to get back to their seats. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, I'm hey, down 17. I'll like, tell you this, though. After the game, Gatehouse was lit. Oh, it was it was a party. It was lit. It was a party. It was and, lit. And it started in the beginning of the third quarter right away. 8-0 run, and that's when I said, oh, we got action. I said, oh, okay. They got a little life in them. And DiVincenzo woke up. Just in time. Oh, did you?